Shadecraft, issue number five from Image Comics. Not only is this issue number five, but this is actually the end of Shadecraft. Or at least the end of book one. But if there's a book two, who knows? I didn't even know about that. I thought this was like an ongoing series. But no, it turns out this is the end. Or at least let me let me read up what the author says at the end. Because at the end, there's a little page where the writer kind of discusses about uh, how the... This is the end of uh, book one, how it was always designed to be a beginning, middle, end, how they worked on it during the pandemic. Here's one thing I didn't know, that it was actually self-finance. So I thought, oh, wow, okay. But yeah, at the end, he says, this is a long way of saying that this is the end of Zadie's story for now. Lee and I plan to continue the tale of the Lou family down the road. I have the next two arcs roughly plotted and Lee's champing at the bit to get back in. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed the story of Zadie Lou, the girl who was afraid of her own shadow and who was confronting her fears, found her own light. We can't wait to show you where she goes next. So I'm hoping that's true. I'm hoping there's a book too. I'm hoping that it happens soon because I really do enjoy this series. I'm not really a fan of the twist that it took with issue number four and with this one, but I see a lot of potential and promise in it. And the fact that it was always planned as a five issue series, at least for book one, makes sense why they did what they did. Cause in my head, I was picturing this is gonna be like an ongoing thing, which is why like I felt like the flow of the story was just really weird. But anyways, uh, yeah, let's jump into it. So in the last issue, Zadie finds out that her mom actually has Shadecraft powers that she worked for the government as an assassin, that she ended up leaving the government because it was just taking a toll on her and she went into hiding. And that uh, Angela has been tr trying to search for her ever since. And they also end up taking Ricky's body. So they take it to a military facility where Zadie and her mom have to bust in. So we have Zadie and her mom using their shadow powers to take out the guards. Usually it's just kind of scare them away Actually, yeah, they've done nothing but scare them away, except for one dude. One dude, Zadie uses like her shadow to like go under his shadow or under him and basically sink him through the floor. So what happens to him after that? Who knows? Maybe he just gets trapped in the ground and suffocates, or maybe there's another room below. Who? I have no idea. For this guy's sake, I hope there's another floor below. It reminds me of that episode of uh, Batman Beyond. Like this is like the most horrifying ways to go. Like. Every, everyone always says, like, what's the most like, scary way to die? And people usually say, like, buried alive or eaten alive. And I will agree that those are two terrible ways to go. But one that always kind of stuck with me was an episode of Batman Beyond. I forgot the name of the episode. I even forgot the character. But there was this uh, villain who has, like, the power to... Basically, they have um, Shadow Cat's power, Kitty Pride's power, where they can, like, phase through walls and stuff. But near the end of the episode, they... Uh, they start losing control of their body, of their powers, and their body starts sinking through the floor. And basically, they're going to just sink and sink through the floor until they sink to the center of the earth and die. Until they sink through the other side and then just continue sinking back down again. Either way, like I always thought that was like a terrifying way to go. Where you just slowly just sink to the ground and you never come back up. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen to this guy because, oh man, that would be just terrifying way to, to just go out but yeah they're able to break in then they have a little bonding moment where zadie realizes like because her mom her mom gets tired and zadie's like you got to work on your cardio and her mom is like i am not tired physically i'm tired emotionally i can say uh shade craft takes a lot out of you and i just kind of forgot how much and that's when they had that little bonding moment where zadie realizes like that's why you've always been so distant uh like this whole time um you've been trying hard not to feel because uh, if you did, you might make the crazy shadows and get the government's attention. And um, I was like, okay, that that was a nice touching little moment. It also explains why the mom kind of came across like a, a B-I-T-C-H in the previous issues. Because she always seemed very standoffish and stuff. But it turns out that she was purposely doing that so that she can have her powers under control and the government won't find them. Anyway, they eventually find out where Angela is and they break in. And uh, they use her their powers to like wrap her up, and they get to Ricky. And Angela basically says like, "Your family doesn't want you. They sent you away. They were happy that you were gone." And Ricky kind of falls for it. And I'm just like, "Yeah, your family's so glad that you're gone that they broke into the military base to get you back." 
that makes sense, right? <laughs> like, come on, Ricky, you idiot. Like, they, they literally broke into a military facility to get you back. That should kind of point out that Angela's lying to you. Plus, who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust this woman who works for the government that you hardly know anything about? Or are you going to trust your own family, your mom and your sister, who have been there for you your whole life? Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. This just bugged the hell out of me. Because in the previous issue, we, we had Zadie giving up on her brother, like, way too quickly. And it just it didn't make any sense. And I don't know. Maybe it's just because my family has always been, like, really super close. And, like, the complete opposite of, like, sitcom families. Um, that, like, if my family told me something, I would believe them in a heartbeat. Like, even if someone else was like, no, 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 they're lying to you. It's like, nah, I, I gotta go with blood. Like, they've been with me my entire life. They've stuck by me and stuff. I trust them over you. But for some reason, Ricky doesn't. So he starts losing control over his powers. And so Zadie's like, mom, you go after Angela and I'm going to take care of Ricky and try to get him back. And so we kind of have a scene where Angela ducks into a room where she turns on all the lights and pulls out a gun on on Zadie's mom and because of all the lights Zadie's mom can't use any of her powers until later on there's like a, a little trick that she did and I was like all right you know what that's actually really smart and cool basically uh Zadie's mom's like you didn't get rid of all the shadows you, you didn't get rid of the, sh the one inside your big dumb mouth and I was like you know what that's true like Angela has I mean even if you're in a room filled with light, there's going to be shadows inside your mouth. So she uses that to start choking Angela. Meanwhile, while that's going down, Zadie is uh, confronting Ricky and not necessarily attacking him, but just basically trying to get through to him as he goes on this rampage. And eventually he's able to, to calm down when Zadie gets close enough to hug him and stuff. And she saves him. And then, um, yeah, she, she busts in on her mom choking angela to death and then she's like no mom like we gotta go just let let her free and i'm just like no you idiot let your mom kill her like your mom has killed before killing angela is not really gonna affect her all that much do it and you'll be safe i never understood this i never understood in movies and cartoons and comics and manga and video games where there's a character that hunts you down or hunts down the main character and threatens to go after you and your family and says like if you let me go i'm just going to continue going after you and the main character is like i'll be ready it's like no dude just kill them right then and there and you'll be done with it wipe your hands clean of this whole mess now you don't have to go on the run you don't have to worry about the government going after your back because the one person who knows your secrets is dead and she's not an innocent person she literally forced you to to become an assassin like she didn't really force but she she pretty much kind of forced you because, like, when you wanted out, she continued to try to hunt you down. And then when she found you, she went after your family. And she kidnapped your son. And she was going to force your son into all the terrible stuff that she forced you into. Like, forcing him to become an assassin and stuff. And you're just going to let her go free? No. Kill her. Kill her and be done with it. I don't know. I just, I never got that. When it comes to, like, superheroes, I was always, like, more on Punisher side. And more on, like, Red Hood side. I guess why I liked them more because they're not afraid of killing people off and i'm like yes that's what you should do batman should just kill the joker and i know there's reasons why he shouldn't but i kind of side with just be be the murderer like i know that's like your symbol you're supposed to be good and justice and all that but obviously justice isn't working at least in batman's case because uh, no matter how many times you put joker away he just comes back and um i'm kind of going off on a tangent but yeah, just kill her. Kill her and be done with it. Kill her and you can go back to life and not have to worry about the government being on your ass. But no, they, they let her go free. And there's there's some more at the end. I'm not going to spoil it. But that bugged the hell out of me. I was like, man, you're, 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 just, you're just falling into the cliche that everyone does in like these kind of stories where they let the villain walk free. And then that always comes back to bite them in the ass later. And it's like, you know what? You should have just pulled the trigger. I would have done that if I was Zadie's mom. Like if, even if like, you know, my daughter is like, no, like we got to go. I'd be like, you know what? You go. I'm just going to finish this so that our family is safe. Hell, you don't even have to use your shade craft powers. Just grab her gun and blow her head off. There you go. You're free. Anyways, yeah, there's, there's some more, but um, I'm, I'm stopping it there. So what would I give it? 
you know what? I'd give it a 7.5. Just because, like, now that I know that it's a, it was always planned as a, a five-issue arc, I understand why they did what they did. I'm not happy with it. I feel like you should have had the mom reveal and getting the government involved. Like, that could have been a separate arc. Maybe save that for book two or book three. But um, having it right from the get-go with book one, I don't know. I feel like you kind of rushed it. Like, I feel like if if this was it, then fine. Like, if you didn't plan on continuing the story, then okay. Do what you want. But if you planned on continuing it, I would have started smaller. I don't know. I, I would have had Zadie trying to learn her powers. And then maybe Zadie fights off against another Shadecraft. Maybe one of the bullies that's always picking on Zadie discovers that she has powers. And so now Zadie is fighting against that person. Or maybe maybe it was someone who put Zadie's brother into a coma. Maybe it wasn't just... Well, I mean, it's kind of explained that... Um, or at least it's kind of hinted that maybe the government was involved in that. But I would have put, like, maybe the government hired somebody. The government hired someone with Shadecraft powers or some something to, to put your brother in a coma so that they can maybe get their hands on him and you can save them getting their hands on him for another book and then you can just have Zadie working on her power so she can confront the guy who put her brother in a coma and stop him before he can hurt anybody else uh, I would have done something that something a little bit smaller and then slowly start raising the the stakes and stuff like that with future books I don't know if you guys agree with me on that it's fine if you don't but that's what I would have done going from she starts learning her powers to Oh, my mom has powers. My brother's kidnapped. We got to break into the government facility and get him back. And I already have full control over my powers in five issues. It just, mm, I didn't really care for that. Because uh, as we see in this issue, Zadie has full control over her power. She's able to take out these guards without, you know, hurting them. Except for that guy who goes through the floor. We don't know what happens to him. But she's able to, you know, stop the other ones. She doesn't really use her powers to stop her brother. She just kind of uses her words. And yeah, she, she... She has full mastery of her, her of her powers, at least in terms of this issue she does. She has no problems conjuring them up or having them do what she wants them to do. So I would have done something different. I would have had her struggle more, and I would have had um, a, a, a smaller villain rather than just like a government. I would have done something like maybe some, the person who put your brother in a coma. Maybe it's a bully who has powers of their own. Maybe it's... Maybe you're... you're because the, the Shadecraft is based off of your emotions. Maybe all your negative emotions formed like this monster that you have no control over. So the first book is her trying to control her powers so that she can face off against her inner demon. Which takes the form of a, a Shade monster. And there you go. Like that, that could have been something for book one. I would have done something like that. Something uh, smaller before getting the government involved. Uh, but I'm kind of ranting on that. You also have the fact that this series introduced Zadie's friends and they did nothing with it. Like you had the setup where she kissed her male friend, whose name I don't even remember. And you had the awkwardness of him not kissing her back. And then he dates one of her bullies. And then you have the scene at the carnival, which ends. And then you think it's going to set up for them getting together. And then it turns out that he is also seeing the shadows. And that ends up going nowhere. So, yeah, it's like, why did you introduce these two characters if you're going nowhere with them? And I get maybe it's because, oh, they're going to play a bigger part in the next book or the book after. I don't know. I don't really see how they really could since the way book one ended. But if it just feels like like the, the first three issues were setting up for something. And then the second two issues just completely changed that. Like It, it felt like it, we were getting an arc and then the arc just mysteriously changed into like halfway through an arc down the line. So I didn't really care for that. Like, I wish it would have stayed more... Like, save the, the whole military stuff for, like, another arc. Maybe book two or book three. I would have pushed it maybe book three or something. Book one should have just been more of, like, the school life. Her learning her powers and then her having, like, uh, I don't know, maybe trying to... Maybe play up the relationship issues. Maybe more of her with her brother. Someone else has shade powers that she has to take on. Or she discovers, you know what happened to her brother and someone was involved and so she tries to get revenge something like that that way you can ha have her school friends like also play a part maybe they find out and they, they help they're helping her or something i don't know maybe they help her investigate what's going on 
just it feels like you introduced her friends and then they played a part especially the male friend for the first three issues and then they just completely disappeared and then they just they're just kind of throw thrown away you know at the epilogue of this one so i didn't i didn't care for that i feel like the flow was completely disrupted and changed like you have you have the beginning of one arc and then the beginning of a second arc and you just kind of put them together and they don't mesh but uh, yeah other than that like i i enjoy this this issue um i enjoy this series um i'm happy that they plan on having a book two and three i'm hoping that that actually happens and i'm hoping it happens soon and i also read at the end that he was working on adapting this into a netflix show and i was like all right sweet like i would totally watch that i'm hoping it's good Whenever it comes to Netflix, I'm always, I'm always wary, especially on when, when it's like a Netflix original. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked about how this would make a great show in like one of the previous reviews, and I still stand by that. So, what would I give this? I think I already ranked it, but if I didn't, it would be like a seven point five, mostly because of the first few issues. The first few issues were really freaking good, and the last two just took a direction I didn't really care for, and I still don't really care for, but it still was entertaining. Like, it, it didn't, like, completely ruin the story for me. But I would have liked that another direction, which I've already rambled on about. So, yeah, uh, this does get a recommend. I love the art. And, yeah, the artwork for this is great. Like, I love the style. Like, if I were to write a comic of my own, I would totally want to get um, the artist for this. And the artist's name is Lee Garbetz. Hope I pronounced that right. Apparently, he's working on Doctor Strange. Um, but yeah, I love the art, and I think Joe Henderson did a pretty good job with the writing. Again, I didn't necessarily like the direction of the last two issues, but overall, I did enjoy this series a lot. And I am looking forward to book two and book three. If there is a book three, hell, if there is a book two, like uh, he says that he's work, he has his next two arcs already like down. So. Let's hope, uh, let's hope it happens, because I would love to continue reading uh, more from this series, especially more with Zadie. Like, I love Zadie's character. She's an awesome character. Um, I, I got no complaints when it comes to Zadie, other than just some of the d decisions. Like the giving up Ricky so easily in the last issue, and then letting Angela, like talking her mom down from, letting, um, from killing Angela in this issue, kind of bugged me. But other than that, like I, I, I've liked her character overall. I like her design. I like her personality, her character. I love the whole Shadecraft powers. Like, that's just such a cool idea. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you think. What are your thoughts on this series if you've been reading it? Do you like the direction it went? Do you like how it ended? Got any recommendations for comics? Any recommendations for manga? Let me know. And uh, take care, everyone. Hope to see you next time. Later. So, what would you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.